Well, hello, Faith family, and thank you for joining us again on the Daily Connection. We're still looking at James chapter 1, dealing with the topic of avoiding the pitfalls of hard times. And that's a little bit misleading because it's not like we're trying to avoid the pitfall. In this case, maybe trying to avoid some of the outworkings or the ramifications of depression and discouragement and doubt. Especially when we talk about verses 9 through 11, where James says, Let the brother of humble circumstances boast in his exaltation. But let the rich boast in his humiliation, because he will pass away like a flower of the field. For the sun rises, and together with the scorching wind, dries up the grass. Its flower falls off, and its beautiful appearance perishes. In the same way, the rich person will wither away while pursuing his activities. So here we see James presenting two different scenarios. There's an argument as to whether he's talking to a believer in verse 9, which he clearly is because he says, the brother, and an unbeliever, talking about an unbeliever in verse 10, because he doesn't come back and qualify it with the term brother, uh, associating that one with the church. Let's, talk, let's put that aside for just a moment and focus on verse 9 and what it's implying. When I read verse 9, it talks about the brother of humble circumstances, uh, exalt, uh, some translations say glory, but the idea is it's to see the high status. And of course, he's talking about the, the value, the true, genuine value of our relationship in Christ. He says, although you're of humble circumstances, you need to boast in your standing in Christ. And I don't know about you, but when I hear that, it makes me think about you know what Jesus in, in Sermon on the Mount said repeatedly, Bless the poor in the Spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, blessed are those who mourn, they'll be comforted. Blessed are the humble, for they'll inherit the earth. And no doubt that teaching in some way, although James may have been just totally obstinate to Jesus at that point in his ministry, it eventually sunk in with him and it made a huge impact, not just on James, but we look at Peter chapter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Uh, we see the, the uh, impact it made on his life. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ because of his great mercy has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. You mean guard, got guarded by God's power through faith for salvation that is ready to be revealed in this last time. You rejoice in this, even though for a short time, if necessary, you suffer grief in various trials. So there again, Peter even is talking about that even though right now we may be suffering hardship, we shouldn't let that overshadow or even overvalue the, what we now have in Christ. Kind of going along with what James says, that even though you're now in humble circumstances, and he may be talking about the fact that through persecution, many Jews had lost their possessions, they had lost their status. Things that were once prized and elevated in secular culture were still seen that way, had been taken from them because they had uh, you know, confessed faith in Christ. And so now they were people of very humble means, no home, maybe had been chased out of their own home village of sort, uh, pushed into other areas of the region. James said, rejoice in that, boast in that, exalt in that, because what you have in Christ supersedes and is far more valuable than anything you could ever have in this world. And to me, that's where he's going with verse 10. Verse 10 is more in the signs of, hey, consider the rich person uh, and again, whether it's a, a person uh, who is a believer or an unbeliever, I tend to go toward believer because it says, but let the rich boast in his humiliation. And so in that sense, uh, he's saying, hey, even the rich person must remain humble knowing that all of these possessions, everything they have really isn't their property anymore and, of course, isn't something that is of high value to them because they now understand that those things will fade away quickly. Those things are temporary, and they shouldn't put any um, eternal value in the things of this world because they pass away. As he goes on to talk about the grass and the flower. Instead, that rich person should understand now that their value comes through Christ alone. And so, and as it relates to hard times, what we're seeing here James is saying is, is that sometimes trials come, to remind us that this world is temporary, to remind us that the things in this life that we tend to place priority on, that we tend to value highly, that we tend to occupy our, our time and our energy with, those things are fleeting. It makes me think about a question the writer asks. It says, do you set your heart and hopes on earthly or heavenly things? 
Well, James says you better set your hopes on heavenly things, that which is eternal. And that's one thing about trials. That's one thing about seasons of testing. They come to bring us perspective. They come to remind us that we are to view everything through the lens of eternity now. And we are to view everything through the lens of our relationship with Christ and find value and meaning there and there alone. And so maybe you're in that season where there's not, you know, you, you're not able to afford certain things. You're not able to enjoy certain things. I know there's a lot of talk about inflation right now. Food prices are up. Fuel prices are up. There's a lot of things that help to facilitate enjoyment of recreation, enjoyment of vacation, all those different things that are now going to cost a little bit extra, and, and we're discouraged by that. But who's to say that that might not be God saying that in this season, you need to find a focus and a fulfillment in me and in me alone. And so he removes those things. He inhibits those things, prevents those things, so that we put our sole focus and priority on loving him on loving others as we love ourselves, and on fulfilling the commission of going and making disciples. We make Jesus the supreme priority of our life. And that's how we avoid the pitfalls of hardship. We make everything, every, everything we do, everything we are about Jesus. So the trials come to refine that faith and to produce that Christ-like character. I hope your week's going well. I hope you're already prayerfully making the commitment, first of all, through personal daily worship, but you're prayerfully making the commitment toward corporate worship this Sunday. I can't stress enough the importance of gathering together with the fellow believers for time of corporate worship and teaching, and then for times of small group time and connect groups where we engage in, you know, with life-changing truth, life-changing ministry, life-changing community. All of those are essential to our continued growth toward becoming more like Jesus and carrying on his work. Love you, faith family, and until we're together again, live sent.